as we are in the beginning parts of August, there's talk about going back to school. And I know for some teachers, they're like, what? We just got out. <laughs> if you're an educator, you understand the pain, right? But at the same time, the, the bigger concern is not about, you know, what, what children are going to wear or what's going to be taught. It's who's going to teach it. Now there are talks that in, in, in districts and in school districts across the country that are really, really at a point of trying to figure out who is going to be in the classrooms to welcome these children back to school as there is a national teacher shortage that is happening. Let me just break down to you for, for what it is. And we're asking the question, what is the future of public education? But take a look. This came out of well, the Washington Post that reported this. Let's post this, uh, Lisa and, and, and Tina. Thank you so much. Uh, it is the Washington Post reported saying, it is hard to know exactly how many U.S. classrooms are short of teachers for the 2022-2023 school year. Uh, no national database precisely tracks the issue, but state and district level reports have emerged across the country detailing staffing gaps that stretch from the hundreds to the thousands and remain wide open as summer winds, uh, summer winds rapid, winds rapidly to a close. The Nevada, for example, take a look. In Nevada, the State Education Association uh, estimated that roughly 3,000 teaching jobs remain unfulfilled across the state's 17 school districts as of early August. In a January report, the Illinois Association of Regional School Superintendents found that 88% of school districts statewide were having problems with teacher shortages, while 2,040 teacher uh, openings were either empty or filled with a less than qualified hire. And in the Houston area, the largest five school districts are all reporting that between 200 and 1,000 teaching positions remain open. What is the future of public education? We wanted to have this conversation with none other than our resident educator. She's always very passionate about this. She's an advocate. She's a writer. She also serves as the host of Queen Talks with Nir Muhammad podcast. You can hear them. You can hear that podcast um, on all streaming platforms. There she is. She's back in the back in the city. <laughs> Oh, how, how I've missed being here, Faraji. <laughs> uh, I know, I know, I know. We miss you so much. We miss you so much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's talk about this because, dear, when you talk about this teacher shortage, and I just broke down just in some areas, Illinois, we're talking about Nevada, we're talking about Houston down in Texas. I mean, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There are districts in this country that are trying to figure out where are the teachers? What's your take on that so far? Honestly, I'm very happy that there are so many teacher shortages. I believe that in order for there to be reform, they have to see and understand that teachers are fed up. Teaching is such a hard profession. Teachers are underpaid. Schools, are again, are understaffed. I mean, there are so many issues um, I actually have a friend, uh, Tamika, who's been an educator for, gosh, I don't even know how long, but it's well over 10 years. And she serves on this board that has actually been talking about how the Praxis exam, if any of you don't know, Praxis is the um, exam that all educators have to take in order to become a certified teacher, how that test itself is very, 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 um, it's, it's becoming very hard for Black people to pass. So there's an mm. issue where a lot of black people want to become teachers, but are not passing the praxis and therefore are missing out on opportunities to even become a teacher. I've taken the praxis. Um, the praxis is essentially just like another um, SAT type of course. Um, I did fine on the praxis, but I will say that the praxis does not mean that you are qualified or unqualified to be a teacher. I have met plenty of teachers who have passed the pra praxis and are still shitty teachers. I've met teachers who are conditional teachers and have not taken the praxis yet that are phenomenal teachers. It's really just, it's a metric that's unfair. Um, I think this is something that we're seeing across the board, even when you're looking at uh, students who have to take standardized testing. Tests do not measure how smart you are. Tests do not measure how capable you are to teach a course. And so we're seeing a lot of shortages because one, teachers aren't passing praxis. Um, students who go to college to become teachers are not passing praxis, the praxis exam. And so that's another issue that you see. Another one, again, pay. 
we were, I underpaid for the amount of stress, the amount of energy, the amount of time that we teachers take and put into that profession. So underpaid. Everyone has to go through a teacher. I don't care if you become a rapper. I don't care. So what? Beyonce didn't finish. Whatever. I don't care. She still had to go through some teacher. Whether you are a college athlete or a professional athlete, you had to go through a teacher. I don't I don't care. But the fact that in some districts, teachers are only being paid thirty thousand dollars, thirty three thousand dollars, forty thousand dollars. So you're literally you had to get a college degree. You had to get a license to say that you could teach. And yet you can't make rent. I've met teachers out at restaurants who are like, yeah, I'm a waitress part time just so I could pay my bills. But I'm a teacher full time. That is unacceptable. Wow. I got out of the classroom multiple times because of the high level of stress, stress from parents, stress from students, just not being engaged, no matter how fun I try to make lessons, they just don't want to do it or just the constant disrespect. I mean, it's just there's so many levels and layers to why teachers are leaving the classroom. And yes, COVID definitely, definitely made it worse. I can definitely say dealing with the emotional traumas, um, just so many different things coming back into the classroom, it definitely was worse after COVID than what it was prior to, for sure. Especially for those younger grades, because if you have a child who they started kindergarten, when when COVID hit, their skills, those some of those um, skills that they would have gained from being in the classroom are now lacking. And so here they are maybe as a second or third grader, and they're really, really struggling. So, I mean, there's just so many issues. I commend teachers all over for finally standing up and saying enough is enough. I don't make enough money to deal with this bullshit. I'm moving on. So do you do you do you, do you think that? And and I mean, I, I guess part of it is like you know knowing the the type of assertive advocate that you are that <laughs> that, that, that that teachers should wage some sort of rebellion, right? Quote unquote, to wave a revolution. You know, and say, look, we don't get paid enough for this type of yeah. stress. We don't get the support that we need. But then the, on the on the other side of it is, is that the qualified teachers like yourself and others who do come into the system, you know, y'all have a passion for making sure that black children in particular, but all students get high quality, edu- high quality educational experience. So if you have teaching, if you have school districts that don't don't can't address the needs of the teacher, but the students still need that high quality educational experience. How do you make sure that that you find some balance between the two? How do how do you reconcile that? I mean, it's really hard. I think at the end of the day, administration is going to have to take a look at why teachers are leaving and really pass out surveys as teachers. I know there should always be an exit interview. I, whenever for me, I just believe that any job when a person puts in their two week notice. I don't care what field it is. You should have, whether it's a survey, electronic, whether it's something that you sit down and you talk to them one-on-one face to face, you should have an exit interview to find out why these, why, why, why are you leaving this field? There are some Mm -hmm. teachers who literally were like, they didn't even just switch schools or districts. They were like, I'm leaving this profession altogether. I don't want to deal with anything education. I know teachers who went back to school to pursue, to pursue completely different career paths. And, and I, I know for me, I know a lot of teachers' complaints is pay and the lack of respect. Yeah. The lack yeah. of respect from both parents, because for me, they were, they were a huge issue. And then also the lack of respect from students. Oh, my gosh. You get cursed out. You get called the B word. I mean, so much stuff happens. Like, I, I literally... I taught third grade this past year for the first time. And I literally one day actually just closed my door and started crying. And I'm not even a crier. I was literally crying because that's how stressed out I was just trying to beg my students to please. Like I want, I mean, I've given them so many speeches about how important they're just, sweetie and mommy's on. Hold on, sweetie. Mommy's on air right now. Sorry. Guys. I'm at the playground with my kids. Um, it's all good. I mean, just the level of stress and anxiety that I felt. Someday, I mean, I, sometimes I would literally feel myself getting sick on Sunday just knowing I had to go into work the next day. And not because I did not love what I did, but just the level of stress that came with it. You know, there's a lot of paperwork involved. I mean, it's just a lot, Faraji. It's a lot. And when you're not getting compensated on top of everything else, it just makes you feel like, what am I even doing? Why am I doing this? Why do I care more? 
why do I care more about your education than your own parent or than you? You know, and I would I would talk to my students and I would tell them like, you know, the mm-hmm. importance of your black skin, like what your black skin even means to the world and why it's so important for you to be here, why it's so important for you to care about what your grades look like, care about what you're learning and be invested in what you're learning. Because a lot of them just didn't see the value of even being in school in the third grade. In the third grade. Mm-hmm. I don't need to, why do I need to be here? What do you mean? What do you mean? Why do you need to be here in the third? You can't read. You can't read. You're on a kindergarten reading level and you're in third grade. That's why you're here, bro. Sit down. Wow. Like, and you're trying to teach. And then it's just all these other things going on. You're like, I just want to slam my head on the chalkboard because I can't even get through this lesson. It's, it's, there's so many layers to this. And I, yeah. I personally believe that regardless of what field you're in, your mental health is most important. And yeah. if, any, yeah. if whatever profession you are in is causing you, your health, mental anguish, whether it's physical, emotional, mental, it's not worth it. It's not. And, not, and I'm not to say that you cannot make yep. good money as a teacher because I do know teachers who are model teachers who make clo- like over $90,000 because they went through this rigorous process of becoming a model teacher. And um, we could literally be on the same exact wavelength. We're both fourth grade teachers, but you are making $50,000 more than me because you did this whole model teacher um, track that excelled you, but that doesn't mean that you're a better teacher. It just means that you had this extra credential that you put behind your name so that you can make this extra money. So, I mean, right. the entire system really needs to be revamped on so many different levels. Right. That's, and, that's, and, and, and what you're saying right there, there is, is a mouthful, and it, and it speaks volumes about the, uh, the lack of priorities that, unfortunately, this country and our own community, Black folks, the lack of priority we, that we put in, uh, that, that we put when it comes to education and the lack of value that we show uh, when we when we interact with our educators without you know children's teachers, it it speaks volumes. Let's go yeah, to uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, and I was just thinking about how some people can't even be with their own kid all day. Imagine being with twenty six or thirty I, or thirty six. My friend Sam said her first year teaching, she had thirty seven students in her class. Thirty seven fourth graders in one Baltimore City class. One. What? 37, 37. students. 37 students Damn. in one class. First year teacher. First year. That's too much. That's too much. It's too much for the babies. It's I'm too much for the babies. It's and then, and then, oh my God, another issue. Oh, granted, I'm not, this is not me coming at any child that has an IEP because I think IEPs are important when they are used correctly and when they are actually followed. But when you have one classroom with with seven different categories of reading levels. How the hell do you teach one class where there are seven different reading levels? Seven. How the hell am I going to, and you expect me as one person to figure out how to meet each student where they're supposed to be, dealing with all these other issues that are going on in the classroom. And now I got to figure out how do I teach this learner? How do I teach this learner? How do I teach that learner? Now I have all these subcategories this is too hard for this group. This is too slow for this group. This is okay for it, it's with, with little support. That is. And then one class. Every time we have this conversation about education in this country, I, I just, you know, and, and, and I talk to educators, I talk to people, and I'm just, uh, and I just think about the pain of teachers, man. I, it's, it's when y'all. I mean, do y'all understand how serious the situation is? That that the system that was that came out of the, the the thinking of men and women has gotten to be so bad <laughs> that that the natural inclination of any person, especially of women, because women are the mothers, right? The mm-hmm. natural inclination of a woman to say, "Okay, I want to teach. I want to share. I want to empower." becomes diminished because the system is just robbing you of your desire. It just kills the spirit. Yeah. And that's sinful. I mean, seriously, that is sinful. I remember being so naive in college. Oh, I can't wait to be a teacher. Got into it like, what the? 
No, no, I don't make enough money for this type of stress. <laughs> Take me back. Take me out right. the game, coach. And then, you know what? <laughs> and you know what? We lose brilliant minds. And 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 you know, I'm talking about you know black teachers, brilliant minds. Uh, 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 brilliant insight, people that can take the education profession to the next level, they all walk away because it's just, as we say, this too much. This, this too much. much. <laughs> all right, let's go to some comments because folks are checking in, got a lot to say on this. My man, Real Brooklyn, you checked in. You said things you need to buy your child. Well, actually, this, yeah. You said things you need to buy your child for going back to school. Tactical gear, bulletproof vest, Wall repelling kit, emergency wound kit, life insurance, oh, oh, and oh yeah, books. <laughs> okay. TL, you said, look, I think the teacher shortage is because of low wages and COVID. Everyone has been forced into or has had to, had time to find other ways to make money. But as Faraji said, who's going to teach our children? Who's going to teach the kiddos? Certainly not the parents. <laughs> <laughs> Lana, Lana, good to hear from you, sis. You said I was a teacher right out of school. I came from a family of teachers and much respect to the field. However, these kids are crazy. Y'all been to the schools lately? Look, Look, I, I mean, honestly, when I tell you <laughs> the fights, I mean, I, like I said, I've taught multiple grades. Um, and I've also taught from like K through eighth grade, teaching STEAM all over uh, the state and in D.C. as well. I had more fights in my third grade class than I did with any other grade that I taught. I was like flabbergasted by how many fights there were. I was just like, what is going I, I literally had to take I got injured this past year actually from breaking up a fight. And I know I'm not supposed to do that, but it's kind of hard to see like kids fighting and like right by a desk where they could hit their head. And that would have been a whole other issue. But like I, it took like three months for my wrist to really even heal from a fight that I broke up. Like the disrespect being called out of your name. I mean, I've seen teachers get called a fat bitch. I mean, I've seen all kinds of things. It's it's insane. It really That's is crazy. insane. That is crazy. I, I, been, I was pregnant and I was threatened by one of my students' family members because his, his sister wanted to play football. She was fine. She was having a good old time. But because she wanted to play football with the boys, not let her, because why not? I, he stalked me for a month and I couldn't take my kids out to the playground for a month, an entire month. And, and I was seven months pregnant. <laughs> and, and and that's the type of support. Cause you know, at that time I, I, I brought this up, like, what is the teacher going, wh what is the school doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like outside of all of the stress now a teacher got to worry about her own physical safety. Now let me just, let's, let's put this, let's put this in proper perspective folks. When, you know, when we talked about, when Nair and I talked about this, I was like, well, how do you want me to handle it? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Like, bro, she pregnant with my child, bro, bro. <laughs> how you want me to, like, how you want me to handle it? Just because at the end of the day, you're not going to roll up on a pregnant woman. And how much of a man are you? So that right. just shows the weakness right there. Like you, you can go hard on a pregnant woman. How about you go hard on a bunch of dudes? All right, let's go. Let's let's let's, let's go back to the conversation. Tia, you checked in. Tia Z, you said the teacher shortage has been coming for some time. Demographics, low pay, racial and financial barriers to get to getting through the program. Two to three years after the bachelor's and disrespect are yeah. other reasons. Absolutely, Tia. Again, Absolutely. that's, that's a, it's it's such a it's it's a biased test. We've been saying this about this with the SATs and so many other tests as well. Like tests just do not tests really don't measure. And I, I mean, even as yeah. a teacher, I can say that. Like you could, I mean, I've seen brilliant, brilliant students completely freeze up when they take a test and fail it. But they at every assignment, they were killing it. They know the content. I could have a conversation with them about the content. But the moment they get in front of that test, it's like their anxiety takes over. They shut. Like there's there's a skill to test taking, but everyone doesn't acquire that skill, and everyone doesn't. Even with you trying to teach those test skills, it's 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 such a it's a dated concept. It truly is. And again, that is one of the reasons why there are such there's such a shortage of black teachers because they really and there's data that backs this up. 
they've been yep. struggling to pass the praxis yep. test, the praxis, the praxis exam. So That's there we exactly had it, too, it. you know. Yeah. Yeah. And again, My I know shitty teachers who did really well <laughs> on the praxis, but can't being smart and being able to teach are not the same thing. No, hell no, it ain't the same thing. <laughs> you can no, be it's not the same thing. Hey, look, hey, look, and you know it, and I know it, right? Like, it's, and, 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 and folks, if you don't know Nira, if you go on her, 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 her you know, her page, I call it queen.com, if you go to listen to her podcast, you know that she is what we call a natural teacher. She's a natural educator. So, regardless of which space she's in, you put her, you give her an opportunity to teach or train in front of adults or children or young people. She going to jump right into it. She just, it just naturally comes to it. Everybody doesn't have that skill set. No. Everybody doesn't have that calling. You know what I mean? So, so, so for those, and I, for if, if don't, teaching is not a job that you want to take just because you need a couple of dollars in your pocket. No. Not at all. Whoa. Don't be that person. Be the person like, you know, you don't you don't you don't study years and years to be a doctor to be like, yo, I just wanted to get a couple of dollars in my pocket. No. You don't yeah. wait, you don't take all that time to be to study law just to say, ah, you know what I mean? It's just something to do on the side. So you as a lawyer, yeah. These are calling. I mean, for people that get into the field that didn't study it in college, those are typically they go through programs like Teach for America. And then they take and put those teachers in low income schools first. They're not ready. So they're not ready. A lot they're of times ready. a lot of times it's white women who are placed in black and brown communities who have zero connection to the community whatsoever. And it's just let me it tell you adds to, the, it adds to the disconnect between yeah. the students and even them wanting to learn. Not saying that it's it's, it's all rainbows and sunshine for black teachers, because I just explained to you that it's not. But I can say that I've had more great experiences than I have had bad experiences. Um, no, I, guess, I, 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 agree. I agree. It's funny I because when I've had so many students call it like, mom, and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, you're not my mom. But that's how close they feel to me, that they're able to, like, they call me mom by accident. And that's there's beauty in that. There's beauty in being able to look at them and say, now you better sit down. And they're yeah. like, but I can, but it's a different connection. You know what I mean? Like they, it, I can talk to them in a certain way because they know that it comes from a place of understanding and love. Whereas they will tell me, oh, if so-and-so, you know, a white teacher talked to me the way that you do, I would have had a problem with that. But because it came from you and I know where you come from, yeah. then it's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Let me, let me uh, just take a couple more uh, comments and folks, because folks have a lot to say. Mike, you said one of the ways we can better compensate teachers is for first-time home, home buyers. Give them a voucher for $30,000 down on a home in the zip code of where they teach for Raji. Mike, uh, that, we actually have... There are programs program like in Baltimore and they in ain't other They ain't giving 30000 though. They ain't giving 30000 though. They ain't 30000 I think they no. give you like ten. Maybe they give you like a credit of $10,000 yeah, or so. I think it's like five or 10000 yeah. for clothing costs. Can y'all... Yeah. Excuse me. Move. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Karina, you checked in. And, you, and Karina, uh, uh, Mike, thank you so much, brother. Karina, you checked in. Always good to hear from you, Karina. You said college counselor and college readiness teacher here. Or at least I used to be. Bless all the educators, but this one is done with the classroom and the school building. <laughs> She's like, I don't even want to see the damn school building. <laughs> Karina, I appreciate you. Uh, Janae, you said, look, we lose brilliant minds who truly have a heart for kids. Then we get these Teach for America people who are on the come up for their resume with no real heart. Karen is behind you. Wow. Wow. Uh, I said it. Collection stick. Collection stick. You checked in and said uh and, and I appreciate the comment. Collection stick, you said showing out kids are looking for attention. They can't get it through positive measures. Let me just tell you, as as we close out this part of the conversation, the fact is it it's a, going to be a community effort. We we this is we're at a point right now in this country. And I truly believe this, dear. You and you tell me what your thoughts are. You will have the final word on this. We're at a point right now that if we as parents, community members, don't get actively involved in the school system, and you, you're not, you and I talked about this, and I want you to explain this to folks. 
Like, for example, if you go into these websites like Great Schools or Niche.com, where you can see what just and that, just do it for fun. Go into these websites, Great Schools, I think it's greatschools.org or dot com, yeah. Niche, N I C H E, and go and rate and see what the ratings of your children's school is in your neighborhood or wherever your school your, your children go to. And look at the rating. They do a simple rating, one out of ten. You know what I mean? If ten is the highest, one is the lowest. Yeah. But if you if we don't get involved and you see your school rating is at a two or three, which a lot of schools are, public schools are, then what's what that means, and and Nira explained this to me. She said, this is not always about the children. There are other factors that can take a school down. Talk to us about that. Yeah, so there's a, the school rating is based on different things. It's based on how well students are progressing in math and reading. It's based on uh, parent participation. It's based on uh, teacher ratings in terms of uh, when we when we're uh, observed, our qualifications, all those things are factored in. And, and then it's funny because the school score is also factored in the teacher rating. It's, it's like this hand in hand thing. Um, so standardized testing is a big thing. That's how they rate uh, the school, this proficiency. It also is rated based upon how students are progressing for e for each year whether or not they are improving, um, moving on to the, the next year. I mean, there are a lot of different factors, but I will say that test scores do play a major, major role in some of the schools. So, I mean, I personally worked at schools that when I looked up the school score, I was like, oh, shit, we're a two out of ten school. Does that mean I'm not a good teacher? No, but it means that, I mean, there are a lot of factors. I can tell you this year when my, my students took their standardized testing, most of them told me they didn't really take it. Most of them literally said, oh, yeah, I just skip, skip, skip. I mean, if it's a 70-minute block for a test and the entire class is done within 15 minutes, that pretty much tells you that none of them actually took the test. So right. that's going to reflect on the school, and it's going to show that the kids don't know anything. They're not basing off of their grades. They're basing it off of how well they did on the standardized testing. So. Mm. Mm. And and, yeah. and 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 when we talk about that the that rating down the road that could that can that can stop funding that can funding. stop that, that, that can, it, it might uh your enrollment is going to go down I mean it's like a domino effect yeah and unfortunately the these lower schools are are found in the black and brown community and it's unfair but again those standardized tests are where a lot of our kids yeah. struggle. I know we even had a little boy who spoke Arabic. He didn't speak English, and they still made this boy take the standardized test. He Dang. can't read. Dang. Make it make sense. And see, listen, again, this is why it's important that as a community member, just as much as you are a parent, that you, that you get involved in some way, shape, or form. You ask for those accountabilities. There are surveys and there are ways very quickly. I just want to, there are ways that you can, 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 there are tools and ways. Just call your school, your school district headquarters and say, look, I'm hearing some bad things about the school, but I, I see that another school not too far from here is excelling. So what, why is that? Yeah. I mean, we're not having those type of conversations. And I mean, some of us, let me just say this, some of us individually, but in mass, yeah. collectively, we kind of get out of thinking that the schools know what they're doing all the time. They always got it right. Your child yeah. could be going to a school that's rated one out of 10, and you think they're getting the highest quality educational experience, and they're not. Yeah. But you know what the difference is? The difference could be you or that community can make all the difference in the world. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I've worked at schools where there were phenomenal teachers, phenomenal teachers, and the school score was still low. You cannot blame the teachers for having a low score when I when we're dealing with so many other issues in the classroom. It, it, it I don't I don't believe that the school score is a, a proper reflection of the work that is being done inside of these schools, right? Right. I also know that with private schools, parent participation is mandatory in a lot of these private schools. It is mandatory that parents volunteer, that parents sign up, that they have a class parent. These are, public schools should and could try to model some of these private schools a little, um, a little bit better. Like, why not? If we see that these things are working in private schools, why not try to implement some of those things in public schools? It's time to be smart. 
Roland Martin's doing this every day. Oh, no punches! Thank you, Roland Martin, for always giving voice to the issues. Look for Roland Martin in the whirlwind, to quote Marcus Garvey again. The video looks phenomenal, so I'm really excited to see it on my big screen. Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. I got to defer to the brilliance of Dr. Carr and to the brilliance of the Black Star Network. I am rolling with rolling all the way. Honored to be on a show that you own, a Black man. <laughs> Owns the show. Folks, Black Star Network is here. I'm real uh, revolutionary right now. Like, wow. Rolling was amazing on that. Stay black. I love y'all. I can't commend you enough about this platform that you've created for us to be able to share who we are, what we're doing in the world, and the impact that we're having. Let's be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You can't be black on media and be scared. You dig?